This is a great lesson. What we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to take the information that we've used in the distance time graphs and the velocity time graphs. We're going to take all that good stuff and we're going to derive some equations. Okay, so sit back and um, for what it's worth, you know, in physics and in the study of physics, we never want to just use formulas, plug numbers in and see what we get. Right? We don't, we don't want to just plug and chug. What's really important is we learn how to use formulas um, based on the situations that they're given to us. And it will help seeing the derivations so that you know where things come from. Because we never just want to pick an equation and put an answer in. Because all the equations that we want to use, you know, the choice that we make to select needs to be an informed one. Equations are better than graphs. They're more versatile, right? You can do more with them. And there's five standard equations that we're going to derive in this lesson. So let's begin. The first two equations, we start with a general VT graph. Okay, so we have, here it is, general VT graph. We have velocity on one axis, time on the other axis. And so if we take two points on this line, right, on our general VT graph, we can find the slope. Okay, so here's point one, it's at V1 and at T1, and here's point two, it's at V2 and T2. Okay, so let's use this and let's find the slope. <coughs> Note that we can always say that T2 minus T1 is always delta T. We can say that. We don't want to do the same thing with, with the velocities because we're interested in, in the initial velocity and in the final velocity, but usually we can make a, an, a, um, a substitution for saying t2 and t1, we can just say delta t. So we know that slope is equal to rise over run, which is v2 minus v1 over t2 minus t1. And we know that slope on this is acceleration. So we can simply say, instead of saying acceleration is equal to delta v over delta t, let's leave it as v2 and v1. And so we can arrive at our first linear equation is that V2 is equal to V1 plus A delta T. Now, just take a moment to look at this because this is a great thing. This is a great equation. A, we've said is slope. And delta T is our units on the x-axis. So when we look at AT, we're really looking at MX. And if velocity is y on the y-axis, really what do we have here? We have y equals mx plus b, which is the equation for a straight line. So there's no magic going on here. We knew that this was a straight line with a slope, and we've just said, okay, this is a linear equation. v2 equals v1 plus a delta t. If we want to generate the second equation, we can look at the displacement under the curve. Okay. And so the area total is going to be the sum of the first area and the second area. So let's shade it in. The top triangle there is going to be A1, and the bottom rectangle is going to be area 2. And so we have half base times height plus length times width. And we can derive this. And we can say, okay, well, for the triangle at the top, the base is T2 minus T1. And the height is V2 minus V1. Right? So the height of that triangle is V2 minus V1. For the triangle, or sorry, excuse me, for the rectangle in the bottom, the length of that triangle, or the rectangle, excuse me, is T2 minus T1. And the height of that rectangle is just V1. So we can expand these out and replace our T2 minus T1s with delta Ts. So we get one half V2 delta T minus one half v1 delta t plus v1 delta t and if we collect like terms we see that there are a couple like terms there the v1 delta t's we can combine them and we can say that displacement is equal to one half v1 plus v2 times delta t and that's our second equation and having done this we're now done with the physics really you know, yeah, there's five kinematics equations, but these are the only two that are derived from the physics. 
because what we're going to do next is simple substitution, algebraic substitution. And what we're going to do now is really just math. Okay, because the third, fourth, and fifth equations all come from the first two. But they're expressed in different ways with different variables to make things more convenient for us. So we're going to use the method of substitution. So let's take our expression in equation 1 for v2. So here's v2. It's equal to v1 plus a delta t. That was equation 1. And here was equation 2, 1 half v2 plus v1 times delta t. So instead of writing equation 2 as it is there, let's substitute equation 1 into equation 2. And here's what it looks like. So instead of writing equation 2 with a v2 in it, we say, oh, look, look at equation 1. That's telling us what v2 is. So let's rewrite equation 2 having substituted equation 1. And that's what we get. And we can collect like terms inside. And we can expand. And what we get is equation 3. When we simplify, the displacement is equal to v1 delta t plus 1 half a t squared. And that's equation 3. And that will be a very, very useful equation as we progress through this course. That's a very, very useful expression. Um, you'll find that you'll use it over and over. In a very, very similar way, we're going to do the same thing. But instead of writing equation 1 in the form that we see it, let's rearrange it and solve for v1. So here it is rearranged. v1 is equal to v2 minus a delta t. So we've just rearranged so that we have v1 on a side by itself. Same information, just in a different way. And now, let's take this value for v1 and substitute that into equation 2. <coughs> and this is what we get. And we can simplify. And now we can write equation number 4, which is almost exactly the same thing, but instead of having a v1, we now have a v2. So displacement is equal to v2 delta t minus 1 half a delta t squared. And that's equation 4. Equation 5 is, again, very, very similar. But now we're going to take equation 1, we're going to rewrite it, and we're going to get delta t on a side by itself. And we can substitute that into equation 2. And when we do that, this is what it looks like which at first looks like a mess. But we can simplify it a little bit, bring that one-half down into the denominator as a two. Say, oh, okay, this is starting to come. We can almost say, hey, you know, v, v2 plus v1 times v2 minus v1, that looks very, very similar. It looks very, very familiar, and, and if you recognize it, it's a difference of squares. And so instead of writing these two brackets, we can write a difference of squares as being v2 squared minus v1 squared. Say, oh, okay, that's a nice little math trick to make our formula look a little bit simpler. And so we can, final, we can finish off with our final equation, 2ad equals v2 squared minus v1 squared. And there they are. Those are the five kinematics equations. They're derived from graphs that have constant acceleration. We, have, we started with a VT graph that expressed constant acceleration. So these formulas are only valid in problems that have a constant acceleration. And you won't see too many other types of problems. Um, in fact, you'll never see a changing acceleration. We just have to remember that if we, have a, if we have a problem where we have different parts, where we have an object that's undergoing one acceleration during this block of time and another acceleration during this block of time, we need to divide up those problems. But knowing the equations and where they come from is basically only the first part of the challenge.
we now have to learn how to use the equations to solve problems. And that's what we're going to do next.